Okay, Virtual Pilots, it's Rick Graham, and in today's video we're going to have a look at doing the Case 1 approach in the F-18 Hornet. Case 1 landings require not only good flying technique, but also a basic understanding of the carrier's equipment to help you make it happen. So we're going to look at some highlights in the arresting wires, the LSO platform, tack end usage, as well as the carrier lighting involved. So there's four arresting wires in the back of the carrier. They're spaced 40 feet apart and they're numbered one through four. Number one wire is the worst one to catch as that's towards the back of the landing area. And this has a risk of striking the ship during your approach. And number three, this is the wire you really want to aim for. This is the best point to land at in that landing area. Here's the uh, LSO platform's location at the back of the carrier. This is an important landmark to know because when you beam this platform, this is when it's time to begin your base to final turn and you'll be on short final which is known as the groove when doing a carrier approach. Another indicator to use when you're a beam is the TACAN. You can see its location there on top of the island versus the LSO platform but we're going to look at how to use the TACAN as a reference later on. At the bottom of the picture here this is the long range lineup system. This is visible after 10 miles at night time. If you see orange, this means you're on the center line. As you start deviating to the left, of course, the light will switch to be red. And then as you move further and further to the left, of course, you can see that as the light starts flashing faster, this is telling you that you're further off course. Up until the point that the light's gone completely and your max deviation is about six degrees left and right. Now if we start deviating to the right, of course, this is gonna be the green light and you're gonna see the same thing as you move from the left to the right up to six degrees of course deviation. So if you can take a mental note of what this looks like as this is what you want to see when you're in the groove on short final. Now in the groove you're going to use the improved Fresnel lens optical landing system as a reference. It gives you a three and a half degree glide slope that targets the number three wire and this glide slope is indicated by the green datum lights and you as the airplane are indicated by the orange light which is known as the meatball. So you use this as a reference to know if you're above or below that glide slope. At the top of the system here are the cut lights. These are flashed for three seconds to acknowledge your roger ball call. Or if you're in uh, zip lip operations, this will be flashed to tell the pilot to increase power. Now these flashing red lights, these are called the wave off lights. And these are used to tell the pilot to go around in the case of an unsafe approach or if the carrier deck is fouled, which is when you have people or equipment in the landing area and it's not safe to land. As we change the angle here, we can see the meatball moving up and down. So the meatball is up above, you're high on the glide slope. When it's below, you're below the glide slope. And you really don't want to be descending below 300 feet without actually having this meatball in sight, which is why it's important to make that roger ball call as you roll it into the groove on short final. And the meatball is something you're going to be referencing all the way to touchdown, so it's pretty important to understand. So that's where the system is in relation to your sight picture. And as you can see, as you change the angle of the glide slope, we're gonna go high. We can't see the ball anymore, so we're too high. Now we'll start bringing it back down onto a normal glide slope so we can see the ball again. Our aiming point is gonna be between wires two and three. And your final heading is gonna be about 10 degrees left of BRC. So now we'll look at the approach itself before we're going into the airplane. We'll start out on a three nautical mile initial at 800 feet and uh, 350 knots. This is gonna be your baseline to work with as you approach the carrier. You'll pass it on the right hand side before continuing on. Now as you fly past the carrier, you're gonna initiate a level break at some point, uh, but you'll need to stay within four nautical miles from the carrier in order to do so. This is known as the kiss off. So if you have a flight, you're going to have to initiate the brakes and have a spacing of between 15 to 20 seconds. During the break, you're going to be idle power with the speed brakes out. And uh, once you get below 250 knots, that's the point you're going to extend the gear and the flaps. Remember, you're going to be maintaining 800 feet, continuing through the turn. You're going to have a few things to aim for by the end of it. You want to be in a reciprocal heading off BRC. You're going to be in landing configuration, obviously, be at on speed AOA and 800 feet AGL. After you roll out, you can begin the descent down to 600 feet 
and you're going to be checking your position relative to the carrier. So you want a spacing between 1.1 to 1.3 nautical miles. You'll be at 600 feet, like we mentioned. You'll be at on speed AOA. Landing trigger is to be completed. And when you begin the turn, it's going to be 30 degrees angle of bank. And you can adjust it plus or minus 1 degree for every 0.1 nautical miles away from 1.2. This means you're going to increase angle of bank if you're closer and decrease it if you're a little further away. So as you begin initiating this turn, um, you're going to be losing some altitude. So you'll increase your uh, throttle by about 2 to 3%. This way you can alleviate that descent rate a little bit. So about the halfway point should be no lower than 450 feet AGL and you'll still maintain on speed AOA. As you continue through this turn, you should start seeing the carrier or at least taking a look at where it is so you get an idea of your sight picture. And when you've got 45 degrees of turn left, it should be between 325 and 375 AGL on speed AOA. You start cross-checking your ICLS to check as you're slightly above the glide slope. And as you continue on this turn, you'll turn 10 degrees past BRC and you should roll out um, about three quarters of a mile away from the carrier. This is when you'll call ball or Clara if you can't see the ball. This is when you start flying the meatball, staying on speed. And this groove will be about 15 to 18 seconds long. And during this time, you're going to be managing your lineup, angle of attack and the meatball, which you follow all the way to touchdown which point you'll go to max thrust and prepare to bolter. But if you catch a wire, you'll come to a stop and then you'll reduce the thrust and bring up the hook and then go park. So here's the case of recovery flow. So if you want to look at it, you can pause the video. Otherwise, it's going to go right into the cockpit. All right, so we're coming up on three miles at 350 knots and 800 feet. So we go through the flow here. Hook will be down. I'll switch the radar to Spencer off. Hook by past the carrier. Now you just get us off. Now I'm going to get the right DDI and set that to the FCS page so we see our flight controls and note that the HSI is set to 10 nautical miles this will come into play later on which we'll look at now we are flying in a uh, formation of two so you see the guy that's our right here now normally it's number one you would break over the deck of the carrier but in this we're going to give ourselves an extra 10 seconds from here and then we're going to do the break this way we have a bit more time to get ourselves established on the downwind so we have the comm menu up there, be about 0.8 miles, do that command, throttle idle, speed brakes out, put yourself in a level turn, pulling at least 2 G's in this. Then you bleed off to 250 knots about halfway through the turn. Once you pass below 250, you drop the gear and the flaps out to full. Just start getting the last 30 degrees, let the nose drop a little bit, use that nose up trim, get yourself to on speed angle of attack. You've been rolling out on the opposite heading and then level the airplane off at about 600 feet. Now before we make the turn towards the carrier, we're going to look at how we can use the HSI to get ourselves at the right distance and how to make that final turn. So zooming back in on the HSI during the brake turn, remember that it's at the 10 nautical mile scale. And by the end of this turn, the goal is going to be to have 1.2 nautical mile cross track distance, which you see at the bottom right of the HSI. If you don't roll out about this distance, then it can make it difficult to correct, so I have a technique you can use. By using the airplane and the HSI as a reference, rather than trying to manipulate that cross track distance, you can aim to finish your turn with the HSI airplane's wingtip on top of the BRC line. This will give you a 1.1 to 1.3 nautical mile cross track by default when you're using that 10 nautical mile scale. So that technique will get you at the right distance to begin your final turn from the carrier, but timing exactly when to begin that turn is important too, and that's when the tack hand symbol comes into play. Because the tack hand is just forward of the LSO platform, you can use it as a reference. So if you wait for the tack hand symbol to become a beam you at your 9 o'clock position, this will let you know when to initiate your roll and start your final turn. Using this technique on the HSI means you don't even need to look at the carrier until your last 90 degrees of turn before you enter the groove. So back on downwind, you want to maintain as close to 600 feet as you can. I'm a little low but I can fix that a little bit later. Watch the tack end symbol, it's coming up on 9 o'clock. Now we'll roll and add some power to counteract the sink. We started at 1.2 miles, so we get about 30 degrees angular bank in there. 
you're going to constantly be adjusting your throttle so you can get your vertical speed right because you want to hit your first 90 degrees of turn between 450 to 470 feet and for this it's going to be in a heading of about 080 and this is the point you're going to take your first look at the carrier as well just to check its perspective make sure it looks right you can see the ICLS is coming into play now as well so you want to be above that glide slope Altitude. during this turn Altitude. because that way when you roll out in the groove you're going to have the ball either being in the middle or being slightly higher, which is the ideal place to catch it. Zero one one. Four five, five, eight, four. Here's a shortcut to use that ball call. Here's an example of a good initial side picture with the meatball centered, the lineup centered at on speed angle of attack, and the velocity vector pointed at the crotch of the ship. Now, as you roll out wings level to start the groove, you're going to be cross checking the meatball your lineup and the angle of attack. And then once you get below 200 feet, you're only going to be cross-checking your meatball and the lineup. And then in close, you're only going to be looking at the meatball. So we roll wings level, start the groove, ball's captured and the lineup is good. So we can put the velocity vector on the crotch of the ship to maintain that. Adjusting a throttle to keep the ball in the center. As we get close to the ship, we're going to have to reduce the power slightly then bring it back to account for the burble. While watching the meatball all the way to touchdown, and we go full power. And once we know we catch the wire, we'll reduce the thrust and go through after landing. So we caught a three wire, we'll reduce the thrust, bring up the hook, and bring the wings to fold. Then it's steering on high, and then we'll get out of the landing area so the wingman can land as well. Then for parking the jet, you can do it however you want really. Uh, if you wanted to get a few of you lined up, then uh, bring yourself around and line up with these tie downs on the nose wheel. And since the deck crew doesn't really give you any guidance, what we're going to do is taxi forward slowly until the foul line intersects the compass and the mirror. So you're watching that foul line, and then once it gets to the compass, it's kind of a stop. This will put you in a position that keeps you clear of the foul line, as shown in the screenshot, and you can complete the rest of the after landing flow. That's the basics on a case one approach. Now the next one's going to cover how to make fixes to improve your case ones. Until then, remember to fly safe and check six.